When you ask a young girl or a single lady, what kind of man do you want to get married to? The answer they usually give is, I want a man who is successful, who is responsible, who is God-fearing, who is well-behaved, who is organized and stuff like that, okay? Now, as somebody who is married to one, okay? <laughs> I'm here to give you guys the downsides of marrying a successful, God-fearing, responsible man. I know that when some of you are giving those answers, you don't actually think about the disadvantages of if you actually get that. Well, today I'm here to break your heart, okay? I'm here to bring you back down to reality. <laughs> I feel like a bad guy today, but yeah, it is what it is. Now, let's talk about this honesty. Yes, you want a guy who is God-fearing, who is honest. Hey, hey, let me tell you guys, eh, that honesty that is actually a good thing can end up being a very annoying thing to you. Yes, you know how, you know, as women sometimes, you know, you ask some questions, even though you're not really ready for the answer of those questions, okay? You are asking him whether you look good in a dress but you are expecting him to say yes. You are asking him, oh, what do you think about this, my hair? Is it nice? Is it fine? But in your mind, you're like, you better say yes. Hey, <laughs> trust me, when you have a real honest guy, that is not going to be the case. He's going to give you his honest answer. That's just the truth. If the dress is nice, he will tell you that the dress is nice. But if the dress is not nice, best believe he's going to let you know, okay? You're going to have your heart broken several times. Maybe before you get the message that, okay, you have an honest guy and you are to expect an honest answer. Before you get that message, you are going to get your heart broken several times, okay? And you're going to have to learn how to deal with that level of honesty. If you're someone that has been lied to all your life, you know, they have cuddled you, they have, you know, given you yes girl answers, you know. <laughs> if you've been surrounded by yes men, okay, people that just tell you what you want to hear. If you get a man who is honest, you are going to hear the hard truth, okay? So it's left for you to accept it and adjust or just reject it. Whatever the case is, you're going to get an honest answer. Now, the next one, you want a guy who is successful, you know, who is doing well, who has money, who is maybe rich. When I talk about success, I don't mean like he has to be extremely rich. I mean, you want a guy who, you know, can provide his needs and provide for you and the family, you know, and take you guys to the next level. A guy who is working hard, who is, you know, making giant strides in whatever business or venture or job that he has, you want a guy who is successful at it, right? Now, let me tell you that such a man is not going to have your time all the time, okay? In fact, the truth is that he's not going to have your time most of the time. Deal with it, it is what it is, okay? You are not going to be his priority majority of the time. He has his job, he has his business, he has that thing that he's successful at. For him to be successful at it and keep maintaining that success, he's going to put in a lot of hours into it, okay? A lot of hours, more hours than you typically expect, he's going to put in those hours into that venture, that business, that job, okay? So you have to get used to being alone. You have to get used to doing Doing so many things by yourself you have to get used to traveling and going to places by yourself you have to get just just accept it now okay so it doesn't become a problem for you in the future you have to accept it if you want a man who has your time all the time you want a man who is always there for you who's traveling with you who's always doing romantic things with you going to places with you if you want that you are going to be the one that's going to be footing the bills you're going to look for a broke man that has the time and the funny part is that for you to be able to afford those things if you're going to be footing the bills you're not going to have time yourself okay it is what it is that is just the way life is if you're lucky and you have like maybe a trust fund baby or a rich hair or a rich uh is it hair they call it yes hair like a rich uh someone that you know inherits you know riches from him maybe a billionaire son a hair maybe if you get a billionaire son that is just chopping money even though they are quite rare but if that's your case then maybe maybe that's when you know he will have your time but if you get a billionaire son who is also a billionaire or working towards get, becoming a billionaire himself he's not going to have your time sis okay you're going to learn to you know be independent okay you're going to learn to do so many things yourself you're going to learn to appreciate doing things yourself okay or with your girlfriends or with your kids you're just going to learn to deal with it because he's not going to have your time now relating to success when you have a husband who is rich who is successful people are always going to think that everything in your life was provided to you by your husband especially when you don't have like a conventional successful job so for instance you're not like a 
you know, well-renowned medical doctor or a scientist or, you know, a big business. Even if you have a big business, people are going to say that it's your husband's money, okay? Even if you have one successful thriving business, people are always going to refer to the fact that you have a successful husband and therefore somehow you have a successful business because of it. So that is a notion or impression that you might have to fight for the rest of your life. You have to just prove that you are also somebody, okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's the easiest way I can say it. You are going to always try to prove that you are somebody. You are not just Oga's wife. You are not just billionaire's wife. You are not just rich man's wife. You are also a rich woman on your own. You are also a rich, a successful woman. You are also educated and all of that. You are always going to have to be proving that point, okay? And even at that, many people will still not accept it. They will still attribute it, especially when your husband is rich and you know in the media or is popular, okay? So maybe not necessarily in the media. If he's a rich, a popular rich man you know people are always going to attribute your success in whatever field you have to your husband almost like a nepo baby you know what they call nepo babies like nepotism people are always going to believe that oh your husband has connection that's why this is working for you if you have a fashion business it's because your husband has connection if you have a thriving whatever it's because your husband has a connection that's just the truth okay except it is a business or a job that it is your brain that you need maybe you're an, you are an astrophysicist or you are a scientist or you are a doctor where it is even if you are a doctor sir they might say that the reason why you're working in that very big hospital is because your husband has money. Now, the next one is you want a man who is responsible. Yes, you want a man who is responsible. I just like a man who is responsible, who takes care of the house, who takes care of the kids, you know, who, who does, who takes care of his family. I want a man who is responsible. He doesn't go out at night. He doesn't, you know, associate with bad friends. He just comes home to me every day. I want a responsible man. Hmm. Let me tell you something, sis. It's a good thing to want, though. It's a good thing to want. In fact, it's a good thing to have. It's very sweet when you have such men, okay? But quickly, you're going to realize that such men are usually not romantic, okay? Majority of such men are usually not romantic. You see that baby girl life that you want to live, okay? He's not going to provide it for you. He's not going to allow you to live that baby girl life because he doesn't go out at night. So where are you going to? Where are you going to if he doesn't go out at night? Now, a lot of men actually allow their wives, like a lot of men who trust their wives, they allow their wives to express themselves, to go out, to do all of that. But even you as a wife, it's going to become uncomfortable at some point if you are always outside. You are always, especially if you are, you are, the, you are the, you know, outside type, okay? You are the... You know, you're on the streets most of the time. I mean, like, you are always going out, you are always socializing, you are at different parties, different events, different everything. You are going to quickly realize that at some point, it now looks like this woman cannot just sit down at home. What is it? Her husband is always at home. Her husband is always with the kids. Her husband is always taking care of the home. Why is she the one that is always outside, jumping up and down? Madam, sit your ass one place. Go and sit down. Go and take care of your home. Go and take care of your family. You are going to get such comments a lot because your husband is not there with you, okay? For women who their husbands are always Always outside is in fact in fact because their, their husbands are always outside they are forced to stay at home so when your husband is always at home you're going to be you're going to actually if you're a social type again you're going to be the one outside and you're going to always get such comments okay but aside even getting comments from people from outside even in the home you're going to struggle with the romance part of things because for instance my husband when he comes back home sometimes he's always cleaning and clearing things and arranging this place and fixing that and fixing this by the time he does all those things what time is left for us to do you know you know romantic things what time is left okay no i'm not i'm not saying that you're not going to find time to do romantic things or to spend time with each other but you are going to have to find the time that's the point you are going to put in a lot more effort into doing romance into having romantic you know date nights and all of that you're going to put in more effort let me use my husband as an example okay now i want us to have a romantic getaway i want us to go out and just you know either go out for a romantic date or you know stay in a in a hotel for like two days or three days just alone or you know travel i want us to have a romantic travel and romantic trip together but no my husband's always saying what of the kids and I'm like, yes, what of the kids? What of the kids? Like, must we always include the kids in everything? Every time he wants the kids to either go with us or he wants to be sure that the kids are going to be well taken care of before he can do anything. Like, I'm just like, me too, I love these kids though. Like, you don't like them past me, okay? But you need to relax, okay? They'll be fine. But no, not my husband though. He doesn't understand that they'll be fine. He always wants them to be with us. He always wants us to go out with them. It, it was even a hassle for me to get house helps because he was doing most of the work himself. And I was like, no, I know that I'm not the one doing the work, but you shouldn't be the one doing the work 
um, either okay you shouldn't be the one doing the work because when do we now have time to actually bond and you know do things with for for each other with each other that was a fight i had to fight before we were able to get help in the house but even at that he's still walking up and down monitoring things up and down and he's like okay rest <laughs> okay rest in jesus name you know but yeah it's getting better with time but just know that it was a a little bit of a problem at the beginning now even related to that is if you marry a guy who is organized and responsible, you have to keep up. You have to keep up. Let me tell you guys something. I always hear women talk about how their husbands are so disorganized. He's always keeping things in the laundry. Like, I mean, not in laundry, like the laundry basket will be here. He'll put things on the floor. He'll just come back and keep his shoes anywhere, keep his clothes anywhere. He's always, you know, disorganized and scattered. And it is women that have to pick up after their husbands, okay? I hear this a lot. I hear of women, you know, trying to show their husbands how to pee into the, the bowl and not, you know, pee on the seeds. They teach their husbands how to, you know, clean up stuff, you know? They're always complaining about their husbands you know being the disorganized ones in my own case it is opposite okay now i'm not a disorganized person okay i'm not a disorganized person but i have a husband who is very organized as well so because i have a husband who is very organized as well i can't even like slack sometimes because me i'm kind of person that i'm organized but not all the time okay i have times of just scattering everywhere maybe if i want to do something i want to fix something i want to i'll scatter everywhere okay i'm looking for something i'll scatter everywhere I enjoy the arranging process, so that's why I don't have a problem with scattering things. But someone like my husband does not even want things to scatter in the first place. He's the kind of person that when he goes on a trip and comes back, the first thing he does is to put his shoes back where they're supposed to be, put his clothes back where they're supposed to be. If they are dirty clothes, they are go and put them in the laundry and wash them. If there are things that he came back with, arrange everything back where it is supposed to be immediately. The first 30 minutes, one hour, when he comes back, he spends time organizing all his stuff back, put his laptop back where it's supposed to be, put everything back, then he will now relax. Me on the other hand, when I come back, I play with my kids, laugh with my kids, you know, do some things, maybe even eat uh, before I now, you know, clear my bags and all of that. But no, my husband knows that before he eats, before he baths, before he does anything, he will first clear everything, pack his box back, put it in the right place, clean it, put it back where it's supposed to be before he will now do what he has to do. So imagine being a disorganized person married to such a man. Like, <laughs> you are going to have problems. Like, you are going to really, really have issues. So you are going to have to always keep up with that organized husband. It's not a bad thing for me. I actually like it. It's not a negative thing for me. Like, I like it because when I keep my things, they are where they, I keep them. Like, he's not going to be the one to scatter my things, okay? If my things are scattered, it is me that scattered them, okay? So, I actually like it, but if I think of... I mean, I've stayed with women before. I've When I was in school, I had roommates. If I think of the average woman, how, how scattered they can be, I'm just like, hey, if you're married to my husband, sorry. It's sorry for you, okay? It is sorry for you. You're going to be miserable a lot of times. Now, the next Next one, you want a man who is God-fearing. You want a prayer warrior. You want a God-fearing man who loves God, who wants to go be with God, who whose goal is to make heaven. You want such a man to be. It's very good though. I have such a man, so it's very it's very sweet. However, the same thing with being organized is the same thing with marrying a man who is God-fearing. You cannot slack. You cannot afford to slack. You cannot even joke anyhow. That's what I used to, that's tire me sometimes. You cannot joke anyhow with my husband though. But joke anyhow, I mean, there are some things he does not allow fly just because it's a joke. There are some things he does not allow fly just because you want to do it, okay? I'm not saying that I want to, you know, be sinning and all of that. But sometimes you just forget yourself and maybe I say things like, ah, man, I'm, I'm broke. My husband will say, don't say that you are broke. Don't say you are broke. Say you are broke. You are declaring things that you don't want into your life. Be careful what you say. And I'm like, okay, sir, I'm not broke in Jesus' name, okay? Now, again, like I said, it's a good thing because he reminds me not to slack and not to, you know, declare negative. But sometimes I just want to just... I don't know how to explain this thing. Now, I know some people will be like, how is that a problem? But I'm not saying it's a problem, but it's actually sometimes annoying, okay? <laughs> when I say, oh, oh my God, I'm so tired. He'll say, why, do you, why are you saying you're tired? You don't use your mouth and say you're tired. You are always tired because you say you're tired. You are the one declaring tiredness into your life. So stop saying you are tired, okay? Have you ever heard me say I'm tired? And it's the truth. I don't hear him saying negative things, okay? So... You can't even be sad. You can't, you can't be sad in peace. Why are you sad? He'll tell you, why are you sad? Are you not a child of God? Have you prayed about it? When you pray about it, then leave it for God and be happy. Why are you sad? <laughs> I remember this election period where I was really, really uncomfortable. I was sad. I was not happy. 
I heard, I heard Simon Tyre, you guys. I heard Simon Tyre. He was like, if you're a child of God, you've done your civic duty, you have voted, then leave the rest to God. You have to pray and also accept that, you know, whatever the outcome is, you are going to be fine. Okay, whoever the president is, pray for the president. If whoever makes it to that place, pray for the person. It's not about, oh, you want a person to be there. God can use anybody. I'm like, I know God can use anybody, but I want God to use my person. <laughs> I won't go to use my personal bed, which is God can use anybody, okay? Again, like I said, I understand that this is the right thing to do. I understand that as Christians, this is how we should behave as Christians. But again, allow me now, I'm human. Allow me sometimes to just be human, okay? I don't have to always be getting correction anytime I'm, I, I, I show that humanly part of me. Even God said, no, correct me rich like that, okay? Or God, even God, no, correct me rich like that, <laughs> you know? So it's the kind of person that, anyone you say, have you prayed about it? If you have prayed about it, then forget about it. Don't worry yourself about it about it. I don't understand how you people behave, how you people say you're Christians. That's what he tells me. I don't understand how you say you're a Christian and then you pray and you're worried. How can you pray and be worried? If you're a Christian, once you pray and hand, over, and hand it over to God, then you should rejoice. You should be happy. You should elevate your spirits. You should be, I'm like, all right, I've heard it. Okay, whatever. <laughs> I remember before, although, well, he still does it now, but not as much as before. Before, anytime I finish, you know, a long conversation with my friends on the phone, like, you know how women are, you know, well, you know how I am, Sha, I don't know about other women, but I feel like a lot, of, a lot of women are like that. When I talk on the phone with my friends for a very long time and we're just in, just, you know how these things go now, we just, this, just that, just that. When I finish my call, next thing I'll just see somebody judging me, like, you know, someone is judging your entire existence. I'll be like, eh, hey, what is it? He will now say, why, he used to call it Unkali in their village, gossip is called Unkali. He will not say, Uncle why are you gossiping? And I'll be like, no, that's not gossip. That's just gist. I'm just talking about different things with my friend. Like, I mean, can't I gist with my friend about different things? And he'll be like, no, that is gossip because you're talking about different people. You're talking about this one. You're not supposed to be talking like that. That is gossip. And I'm like, so I'll call my friend on the phone and just be like, hi, hello, hello. How you doing? What good? What good? <laughs> Like, as women, we're just about different things. Just about our family, our friends, our husbands, our children. Like, we're just about almost everything, okay? So, to me, I don't see it as gossip. But to him, it's like, that is idle talk. You shouldn't have idle talk. It's gossip. And I'm like, okay, sir, all right. So, anyway, like I said, he has changed now. He doesn't really... He's not so strict on his definition of gossip. But at the same time, like, if I actually do gossip, because sometimes I, I do gossip, if I actually do gossip on the phone with my friend, he will just be like... So gossiping and I'll be like, okay, sorry, I, God forgive me, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Who am I to judge? <laughs> and that leads me to the last one. Their sense of humor is just somehow, okay? I think it's not just, um, you know, having a God-fearing guy. I think it has to do with, you know, 30 plus or 40 plus guys. Their sense of humor and mine, even though I'm a 30 plus, our sense of humor does not really, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, <laughs> you know. Uh, maybe because I'm on social media, again, that's, you know, different because another thing with such men is that a lot of them are not on social media, especially if they don't have to be, okay. I'm not saying men on social media are not God-fearing, no. I'm just saying that if they don't have to be, a lot of God-fearing, responsible men are not on social media. Like, are, even if they are there, they're not the ones posting, you know, pictures and test traps and stuff like that. They're not the ones engaging with social media posts and all of that. Maybe they might be there for football or they'll be there for just, you know, family's sake and stuff like that. They're not the ones that are really engaging on social media, okay. Again, I'm not saying that men who do engage and not God fearing. I'm just saying that the chances are they are not on social media, okay? Now, because they're not on social media, there are some phrases and some things that you say that they don't really get. Because, again, they're not on social media, they are not from the younger generation, so they don't really get some slangs or some things, okay? So, I saw a post on this um, on TikTok, okay? I saw a post about this on TikTok where people are talking about, oh, 30 plus. You tell your 30 plus guy, oh, you ate and left no crumbs and he's like, what did I eat? <laughs> You know, I can imagine telling my husband, even though it's not a phrase I use, but I can imagine telling my husband, oh my God, you ate and left no crumbs. My husband would be like, why would I leave crumbs? Am I a child? Like that kind of, that kind of very dry sense of humor. Again, like I said, it's more like a 30 plus, 40 plus, you know, 50 plus kind of thing. I don't think it's really just them being God-fearing and all of that. But again, my husband, because he's a God-fearing person, he's not really engaging himself with some of those you know posts and stuff like that because they don't enrich his spirits okay so he, there's no point in him engaging in them related to that social life too is always one kind okay what your 
your typical idea of a social life at you know at a young age is not the idea of social life okay so talk about going to club talk about partying talk about you know having fun and all of that they are not really into that they really prefer just you know playing a sport you know i don't like playing video games sometimes you know maybe go, going with the kids out to go and swim for me why it works for me very well is because if i really think about it we are both sides of the same coin okay so it's not really a problem, but I can really see it being a problem for ladies who are outgoing, who are fun, who are, you know, out there, you know, living the life. You say you want a God-fearing man who is successful and all of that. Just know that, ah, you and him are most likely going to be, you know, opposites when it comes to personality and what they consider as good, what they consider as fun, what they prioritize. You guys are going to clash a bit with that. But again, it is marriage. That's what marriage is all about. It's about, you know, finding a healthy medium. For me, I think me and my husband have, at this, I mean, this 12, we're going to 12 years in marriage. I think that at this point, we have kind of, kind of, well, not really, but we have count, kind of found a held a healthy medium okay a healthy you know blend of both worlds right so um again like i said we're both sides of the same coin but i'm more on the liberal side while he's more on the conservative side of the same responsible coin <laughs> we bring my liberal side and his conservative side together and then we form something that is acceptable and palatable to both parties okay and that's how it works just know that it's not all, all that glitters is not good okay it's not as sweet as it seems okay on paper it's so lovely oh god fearing hard working responsible yeah, all of that successful yes on paper it sounds really good but in reality you might need some work for it to work for you okay yeah that's it let me know what you guys think in the comment section let me know if you can relate to everything that i said i want to just add if you're not subscribed to this channel please i'm begging you please subscribe to this channel i beg i think god beg you okay because i know that a lot of people who watch my videos are not actually subscribed which is funny like a lot of people just watch me and go why why are you doing that what is it? Is it my face? Is it my clothes? Is it is what is it about me that you just watch and, and think that ah let me just watch and be good. I don't need to subscribe. What is it? Let me know in the comment section. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye guys.